We're gonna cover when athletes should take their protein and what's optimal, and we're gonna start right now. I'm Olympic strength coach Dane Miller. One of the biggest questions I get asked, even when I've coached at 10 world championships, when I'm writing comprehensive programs for athletes who become state champs or become NCAA Americans or even train to go to the NFL, one of the most consistent questions is, when should I take my protein? And even recently, uh, Olympian and three-time world finalist Sam Mattis had asked me, Dane, what is like the anabolic window? When should I be using my protein? And I started to explain to him a concept or an idea or a hormone known as mechano growth factor. And we actually talked about mechano growth factor way back in 2020 in like our first YouTube videos that we started to go over what that anabolic window is. And I started to explain to Sam and I could just see his eyes you know, glazing over and just thinking through like, all right, just tell me the application. And I think as strength coaches, right, when you're dealing with high school athletes, oftentimes it can be very overwhelming to expect an athlete to just do something as simple as like have some protein post-workout, get to bed on time, or wake up in the morning and have a full breakfast, like a real breakfast. These are like simple tests that are concerning. When we're looking at something like mechano growth factor, which can essentially help your body partition protein more effectively after it's stimulated from a bout of exercise, it actually makes things a little bit easier when you start to understand this stuff. And even to the point of how much protein should we have? We've gone over a recent paper from Luke Loon's group and, and when they talk about, or when they analyze uh, in Jorn Tormelin, when they analyze 100 grams of protein ingested versus 25 grams of protein ingested, which one had more muscle protein synthesis? And that's the big factor here is that if we can find papers or research, and right here we're gonna get into does timing of protein matter, the effects of two different timing of high protein diets on body consumption, muscular performance, and biochemical markers in resistant trained males. So we're specifically referring to males, and we're gonna be looking at something. I wanna bring this up quick too, here's that. In this case, we're looking at a group from Iran and a group from the United States, it makes me so, and France. It makes me so happy that we can see this getting done uh, in the realm of sports performance and comprehension. And so in the realm of application, if we have all these like, you can only have 30 grams per sitting. That makes it hard for a high school kid to like 30 grams, well what's that? They get overwhelmed with what that is, right? And you can only have it 30 minutes after a workout, 30 to 60 minutes, that's that anabolic window, right? That's that window time frame. So now you have to have 30 grams between 30 and 60 minutes post-workout, and if you don't, you won't have the gains, right? That's like the traditional thought process. So it gets a little confusing. So if you're a strength coach and you're trying to get an athlete to do what they, what they should be doing for optimizing recovery, well now that makes it a little bit harder. But that's where this paper comes into play. And we're going to look at this. It's unclear. And we're going to just go right into this abstract. They go over all the aspects of this is the intro, right? Uh, and they're looking at, okay, for individuals looking to optimize improvements in muscular hypertrophy and strength, participation in resistance training in conjunction with adequate dietary protein intake is key. Okay, so the key variables is resistance training. That has to be used to maximize muscular hypertrophy and then understanding volume, intensity, frequency. Volume, intensity, frequency, that's all part of the programming. If you guys are a strength coach or if you're an athlete, don't worry about that. Just head over to peakstrength.app. We've got it taken care of in our strength training app. You can download Peak Strength and we lay out the exercises, the volume, the intensity, and it's based on our periodization system that we use here at Garage Strength. Then we get into, okay, similarly, there also exists dietary protein intake variables to maximize the adaptations. So what should be the total daily protein intake? What's within the day distribution? How are we piecing that out over meals? And then we've got to think about all of those different factors. So in this case, 40 resistance trained males, okay? 24 years of age to 28 down to 20 were recruited for this study from November of 22 to March of 23. Okay, and so what they ended up looking at was the inclusion criteria comprised performing uh, resistance training three times a week for one year prior to the start of the study. So these individuals, the 40 individuals, they had to have been training for at least one year, okay, to, to be involved. They couldn't be taking any steroids, which is great, because uh, steroids can do wonders for muscle protein synthesis, or supplements for at least one year prior to the start of the study. So just basically guys that go to the gym, they lift, and then they go eat some chicken and broccoli. 
<laughs> uh, they've got no mus musculoskeletal disorders. They abstain from alcohol and tobacco, which is, you know, that's a that's pretty tough for that age group. And then sleeping for at least seven to eight hours during the 24 hour day. And they have a protein intake lower than two grams per kilogram, okay? Possible participants were excluded based off of if they did or did not meet this criteria. Okay, so then, they, then we're looking at the design. What's the design of this paper? And guys, I think this is important for being a strength coach to understand the design so then you can educate your athletes on it very clearly. Like, hey, this is a group, it was 40 men. Maybe you're talking to a woman, like, well, yes, it's men, but it's still applicable. This is what they did. The trial began with the 40 uh, participants. They were randomized into two intervention groups, resistance train plus two grams per kilogram of protein three hours prior to and three hours after after and then they looked at where's the other one and then they looked at uh the resistance group of protein taking two grams plus two grams per kilogram of protein immediately prior to and after resistance training okay so three hours before three hours after or immediately before and immediately after and then both groups engaged in an eight week resistance training regimen okay so eight weeks 50 grams of protein was concentrated and isolated whey protein on the training days on non-training days the total protein intake was consumed through their daily diet prior to baseline measurements participants went through familiarization with testing and experimental protocols and then final assessments were conducted approximately 72 hours after the last exercise session so they went through eight weeks they they finished up three days later the, the the end of eight weeks they lifted three days later they they took all their measurements to make sure that everything was was in line and so let's go back up to this here so let's just review this all this stuff you've got to eat protein you got a resistance train they got a group of 40 individuals who trained for at least a year. They weren't on drugs, they weren't taking a ton of supplements, and they were sleeping well. They compared the effects of eight weeks of lifting with two different high protein diet strategies, either right before training and right after, or three hours before and three hours after in these resistance trained males. And then they looked at their body comp, their muscular performance, so strength performance, and then other markers. So nine participants, four from the three hour group and five from the immediate group, uh, withdrew, so pretty equal. Therefore, 31 uh, participants completed the study. So 75% were left over at the end of eight weeks. All measures of skeletal muscle mass, the Australian pull-up, and muscle strength. Let's just look up, I, I wish I would have read that down in the study. Let's look up the Australian pull-up here real quickly. Okay, so the Australian pull-up is a reclining row. And muscle strength significantly increased post-intervention in both groups. The biochemical marker urea was also significantly increased from pre to post in both groups there was no significant difference between groups conclusion the high protein diet enhances muscular performance and skeletal muscle mass in resistance trained males irrespective of intake time okay consequently the total daily protein intake appears to be the primary factor in facilitating muscular growth induced by exercise so i think this is when we can go in as a strength coach then and look at the application i think this is really great because even compared to the previous study where we talked about total amount of protein consumption 100 grams versus 25 grams in that study now we're seeing a high protein diet is gonna make you more swole. Timing doesn't matter that much. It's more based around the day. And I even think with weight loss, I think weight loss should be looked at over a week basis instead of a day-to-day -day basis. I think if we looked at weight loss or muscular gains on a week by week basis, now if we're eating a high protein diet day over day throughout that week, we're gonna get more jacked. We're gonna get stronger. All of our stuff is going to improve if we're doing the resistance-based training at least three days a week. Okay, same thing if we are in a caloric deficit over a week. If we have a weekly caloric deficit, we will lose weight. If we have a weekly caloric surplus, we will gain weight. These are simple protocols that we can then teach our athletes to apply. It's like, hey, I want you to take 50 grams of protein within five hours before training. It doesn't matter if it's four hours, three hours, two hours, one hour, just some time in there don't give me an excuse. Just take it. It's easy. You can do it. Post-workout, it doesn't matter if it's 30 minutes, an hour and a half, three hours, four hours. Bill Campbell's group here is showing this. Look, you can have 50 grams of protein pre five hours, post five hours. And then as long as the protein intake is equated throughout the day for the rest of your body and you're taking uh, about, so let's say if you have, if you weigh 100 kilos, 
if you're taking two grams per kilo throughout the day, you know, or you're, you're consuming that, you're looking at 200 grams of, of protein, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna be jacked, okay? It's a high protein diet, you're gonna be healthy, uh, you're gonna have better muscular endurance. So even right here, following the completion of the one rep max in the morning, participants were provided to engage in leg and chest exercises, 70% of their one rep max, uh, technical failure. So all of this stuff is showing us that muscular strength, muscular endurance, performance testing, their blood tests, resistance training and protein intake, you know, all of that stuff ended up being virtually equal. And from an application perspective, this makes it easier for us as strength coaches to just establish those guidelines, follow the guidelines, show up in the gym, do the work, do the resistance-based work, follow peak strength, become a freak athlete, do weightlifting derivatives like technical coordination movements, do heavy lifting like back squats, bench presses, pull-ups, front squats, single leg squats, do plyometrics on your athlete day that's inside peak strength and do your impulse-based work and do your hypertrophy-based work. And as long as you're taking enough protein and eating enough protein on a daily basis, you're going to make those gains. So head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store. You can download Peak Strength today. You can select what specific sport you wanna get into. And then as a strength coach, make sure that you educate your athletes on these specific protocols in this specific paper so that they can become greater versions of themselves, AKA freaks. Because remember, freaks. If you want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.